Welcome on in football fans, it's your boy GS Luke here with our DFS and prop preview for tonight's two game Monday night football slate. I know it's coming out a little bit later but had some computer things to address today so I'm going to keep this one real quick and concise just give you the goods out there for either slate. First off with the DraftKings side some strategy out there for the two gamer. I'm treating this slate a little bit differently than most and then over on the prop side of things some underdog and prize picks props they've already added for exposure so and again keep this one real concise here. Let's go ahead and start it off with first off a look at DFS and what I'm doing for this two gamer. These two game slates, you almost want to treat like a hybrid between a main slate and what we have with Showdown because you have a lot of similarities out there from either action. Uh, so first off with main slate, similar type of roster construction. You've got defenses in there. So a lot of that is the exact same, right? No captain spot to work with, for example. But from the Showdown side, you want to work with as much correlation as possible. So you only got a two game sample to work with. So if one game shoots out, one game goes way under its total, you're going to find some correlation trends there between who's actually optimal than what happens. And then you also want to consider game theory too, because if you only have two games to choose from, that's a whole lot less options than what we have for a main slate. So while as on a main slate, it's more about just playing the best plays, you're going to have a much lower chance of duplicating yourself because of the vast majority of players to go through. A showdown, you got to really worry about duplication. You got to leave salary on the table even to ensure that you're not going to duplicate. A two game slate is a lot of the, you know, a little bit of each out there from either slate. You're going to want to have some main slate things going on, but a lot of those showdown concepts implemented as well. So it's a little bit of a different beast. I think you have to handle it a little bit differently. And as we go position by position, I'll make sure to point out some of those differences. So first off at quarterback, you've got one real chalky option out there with Lamar Jackson, and then pretty spread out ownership for the other three players. So Lamar is the highest projecting quarterback, even out there in my projections. On here, of course, we've got my Patreon page projections, which uh, you can download yourself if you're one of my Patreon members. But Lamar Jackson over a 3x points per dollar, but about 40% projected ownership. So whether you're going to take him at eight grand, you're going to pay for it there. But also in terms of the game theory edge and players like Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, a step down when it comes to that ownership. And then a Justin Herbert, your lowest owned there at 13.6%. What I'll say about these is that Baker Mayfield is probably my favorite out of the bunch. Not only does he have a little bit more correlation with his wide receivers as he's not bringing as much rushing upside to the table as somebody like a Lamar Jackson, but he's also much lower owned. So if you're going to play on those large field GPPs where you're going to need the absolute nuts to win tonight, if Baker Mayfield leads the Buccaneers out to there to like a 300 yard game, maybe two, three touchdowns, that could be massive in the quarterback that you have to play because he's a little bit cheaper than Lamar Jackson. And as I mentioned, a little bit easier to correlate out there with your wide receivers. So uh, believe it or not, Baltimore has been one of the worst teams in the NFL against opposing quarterbacks and opposing wide receivers. So I think the matchup's a little bit better than most people would imagine as well. So at the quarterback position, you guys can probably tell where a lot of my exposure is going to be uh, if I like Baker Mayfield so much. But if you want my entire player pool, every piece that I'm getting to this evening, uh, the Patreon page has that as well. At Kyler Murray, they are a slight underdog against the Los Angeles Chargers. So you could potentially look to them throughout the air as well. Um, they're a really soft defense, the Cardinals, that is, against opposing rushing attacks. So J.K. Dobbins going to be unbelievably chalky at the running back position and uh, a perfect segue over here to running back. So what I'll say about these running backs is that ownership's a little bit more spread out. Outside of J.K. Dobbins, who's just under 75%, you've got about 50% on a Henry, 50% on a James Conner, and no one else that is over the 25% mark. So part of the reason for that is the committee that you have on the Buccaneers. Hard to have one guy that's 50% owned when the um, balls, the ball and the usage share is going to be spread out so much. But what you like about this running back position is that Derrick Henry is only 50%. And I say only 50% in quotes because that's probably lower than he should be. I mean, he's the sort of player that breaks these two-game slates. You've had guys like a Jamar Chase in the past, a Tyree Kill on a two-game slate, be 75 to even 90% owned. So maybe it's the $8,000 price tag. Maybe it's a slightly tougher 
tough matchup against this Buccaneers front seven, but he's only 50.7% out there in my projections, which I know you may roll your eyes at, but it's only a two game slate and you've got to look at it comparatively, right? You got to look at it with some perspective and 50% for Henry on this kind of slate is actually, I would argue a little bit too low. You've still got James Connor, for example, at like a 47.47% uh, 47 projection right there. And sure, he's a little bit cheaper. He's $6,600. They're in that same range in terms of points per dollar projection, but you're going to have pretty much all the salary that you want tonight. It's very soft pricing, particularly at like tight end, uh, even wide receiver. You're going to have a lot of these like $4,000, $5,000 wide receivers that are no problem to mix into lineups. So I think that you're going to be able to fit in that extra $1,400 if you have it. And if one's going to be only 5% higher owned, I'd rather have the clearly higher projected player. J.K. Dobbins is going to be by far the most popular play at running back. You can see I actually project him a little bit better than Derrick Henry this evening. A lot of that just because of the matchup. Derrick Henry is clearly the better player. So if I was playing in single entry, if I was playing in a higher dollar contest, um, J.K. Dobbins might be like 90% owned out there in those kind of builds. I might just play Derrick Henry and avoid Dobbins and use that as my one real big piece of leverage. So I like both running backs tonight, but I think depending on what you're doing with the rest of your ownership and the rest of your lineup, um, J.K. Dobbins could be a little bit too highly owned out here at the running back position. So large field GPPs, I don't like them nearly as much as some of the other builds, but even in single entries where you, you might be able to take on that ownership for J.K. Dobbins, uh, just Derrick Henry feels like a really good play this evening, uh, especially if you're going to be somebody like myself and avoiding some 40% owned Lamar Jackson chalk. A good way for Lamar Jackson not to be the optimal quarterback tonight would be if Derrick Henry steals his touchdowns, goes out there, scores twice in the red zone or something like that, and Lamar Jackson just puts up like a 20-25 point day. That might not be enough to pay off an $8,000 price tag at quarterback. So um, if you're going to take that same kind of approach, you may want to consider doing the same thing with Derrick Henry. These Buccaneers running backs are going to be tough to get a little bit of a gauge on, at least in terms of their usage. Um, Rashad White is technically questionable, but I believe it, or at least as of last reports, uh, should be going out there and playing this evening. Obviously, go out there, track that before lock. But if you're going to have all three available, that would be an Irving, a White, and then a Sean Tucker down here at $5,000. It limits the upside of all three. I wouldn't want to be using them in cash or anything like that, but it's going to keep their ownership super low. So if you're trying to find some leverage we really haven't had a player to do that with yet I guess you could say that Justin Herbert at 13.6 percent would be a piece of leverage uh, not the best projection though down there just 2.84 x points per dollar these Buccaneers players you're also getting a relatively low points per dollar projection but if they score a touchdown they have an avenue out there to the optimal lineup so kind of like in a showdown slate where you're probably playing guys you would never touch out there in a main slate a two game slate I know it's the same kind of lineup construction as a main slate you need to be playing those same kind of guys. It's only a two-game sample. It's only twice the sample of one of those showdown slates. And though there's maybe a slightly lower chance of somebody wacky making the optimal lineup, you've also got more spots to fill, right? It's not a six-spot lineup like they're in a showdown lineup. So it's a, I think it's a little bit closer to that showdown slate than you think when it comes to getting some of these uh, weird outlier sort of performances in there. The Justice Hill would be that same kind of player. Like a, a main slate, you're not playing Justice Hill, right? He would be maybe a 5%er, even for those large field GBP 150 maxers. But a Justice Hill here at $4,800 on a two-game slate has a much higher chance of making it to the optimal lineup than what you have with a 12-game main slate. So $4,800, he's maybe not the best play out there in single entries or especially not like in a cash kind of build. But in large field GPPs, these are the pieces of leverage that you're using to get different. So if you're going to enter a 20,000 plus entry contest, you know, you want to be considering and trying to embrace one of these outside kind of options. And not like a Benson, a Vidal, a DeMarco would be my favorite kind of play. But if you can find your Bucky Irving or a Justice Hill down here at $4,800 and use them in the right kind of correlated lineup, I think that there's some upside out there with those kind of plays. So Bucky Irving, if you have Rashad White get hurt, or maybe he's just the, the more productive back that they go with the hot hand kind of situation, that could be his way to get there. Then, of course, down here with Justice Hill, let's say that the Ravens are somehow playing from way behind. Well, he's the passing heavy running back out there for Baltimore. So if that were to happen, let's say the Tampa Bay goes out there and kick some ass. Well, you might want to have Justice Hill as your buyback, maybe to one of those Baker Mayfield stacks, um, because he would see a huge increase in usage in that kind of situation. 
Next up, we got the wide receiver position here, and uh, you can really get different here as well. So running back, I mentioned a few options. Um, top end of the board, you're not going to find that leverage, so I guess we'll start there before we talk about the diamonds in the rough. Uh, but just like the running back position, pretty spread out towards the top end of the board. I guess a Marvin Harrison would be a little bit lower owned at sub 25%. Uh, Mike Evans, he was a little bit banged up this week. In fact, they thought it would be a game time decision. Um, he shed the tag, so he's no longer that game time decision, but uh, probably not 100% at health. So he's only 42% out there in my projected ownership. Uh, everyone else, though, is like 50 to 60%. So Chris Godwin, your most expensive wide receiver, really good matchup against that Baltimore secondary. He's about 56% owned. Zay Flowers, he's even 53% himself. And Alad McConkey, of all people, is even there at about 54%. And you can see his projection, too. A lot of that comes down to price tag is he's nearly a 2.75x points per dollar, which is elite level stuff. You don't usually see that very often out here on this main slate kind of format. So the top end of the board here, I agree with a lot of this chalk. The added caveat here is that play them in the right sort of situations. If you're going to start off with a quarterback like Baker, you want somebody like a Mike Evans or Chris Godwin in that lineup. If you're going to start with a Lamar Jackson, well, you probably either want a Zay Flowers or a likely or an Andrews out there in that kind of lineup. You start with a Justin Herbert, well, maybe you start with McConkie out there at wide receiver, uh, vice versa, right? Keep going through those different kind of combinations because just like you have on a showdown slate, you have to embrace that correlation. So I was talking about game theory before. That's why we went through some of these lower end running backs to potentially go out there and mix in. The other half of the equation that I talked Talked about was trying to go out there and correlate your lineups just like you would out there for a showdown slate your wide receiver position here especially like some of these chalkier players just use them in stacks right if you're gonna use them as a buyback in a stack right i think that makes sense as well right? just hoping that one of the two games tonight just shoots out goes way over its total um that's the way that you'd get to the optimal build so this top end of the board i don't think it's that interesting i'm mostly just going to be pairing it up with quarterbacks maybe using some buybacks out there at the top end of the board the more interesting part of this and where i'm really going to focus for the next minute or two are some of these lower tier wide receivers and they're lower tier they certainly have a lower floor single entries cap you're going to want to use these kind of players sparingly. Um, the guys that are 2x points per dollar or lower are the ones that I'm mostly talking about here. But look, let's look at the ownership numbers, particularly with the cheaper players down here. So uh, Greg Dortch has seen a lot of playing time this year. He's going to be sub 10% owned. A Sterling Shepard, especially with Mike Evans a little bit banged up, has played a little bit, little bit more. He's only 6.4% owned. And Nelson Aguilar has played sub 50% of snaps out there for Baltimore, but is at least seeing the field out there in every single game he's sub 10 percent you've got some questionable guys uh trey palmer currently projected out even though he's still questionable uh fahoko a uh, davis down here at just three thousand dollars are all going to be sub 10 percent owned so these aren't the best plays. They would normally be a lot cheaper if you're playing a showdown slate. Unfortunately, the minimum price out here for this format is three grand and not the $200 that it would be out there for showdown. So that's why no one is using this kind of uh, player, these kind of guys towards the bottom end of the board. If you're going to play in a large field GPP, remind yourself, it's only two games to choose from. There's going to be some wild shit that happens in terms of the optimal lineup. These kind of guys down here are absolute gold because if Dortch, for example, gets a, a red zone target, takes it for a touchdown, a Shepard, an Aguilar, it, does, it doesn't matter. Any of these guys down here, they get into the end zone tonight, you're going to have to have them out there in the Largeville GPP. So while there's a lot of chalk towards the top, there, there's not that many pieces to get leverage right? Like if you're using a Derrick Henry or a Dobbins, uh, let's say you really like Lamar tonight at 40%, like you're, you're going to have some trouble getting different. The real easy solution to it are one of those few running backs that we mentioned or the bottom end of the wide receiver board. And then over here with tight ends, you don't have a bunch of different players to choose from. So in terms of elite options, you've got Trey McBride and then I guess Isaiah Likely is the other one that I would group up there. You have middle tier options like uh, Mark Andrews, who I guess could still get there, but he is still 15% owned. So it's not like he's a true leverage play at this point. Kadon is over 40% himself. So uh, there are a few like sub three pro uh, point projection players you can get to like uh, even sub two point projections that I'm not including on my projection sheet, 
But uh, I think the spot to do it's at wide receiver. You just have a much higher ceiling performance out of those sort of players. And at tight end, when you're talking about the backup tight ends, uh, which would be the ones that aren't even on my sheet right here, they're going to score like a five to 10 yard touchdown at the very best to go out there and get to the optimal lineup. Um, tight end is, I think, a position where you take one of these top four. So an on and Andrews, a likely and a McBride, and then you don't take a set, second one out there at the flex position. So that's how I'm handling my exposure this week. I'm just trying to jam in one of these top four tight ends. And uh, I guess you could include Disley. I mean, he's a starting tight end. He's at least seeing a bunch of playing time out there. So I guess I should say one of these top five tight ends. I'm going out there and playing in lineups. But uh, the double tight end build is probably not going to be a thing for me this week. Uh, I think if you're going to try and get different, really force in somebody that's a little bit lower owned, that there's running backs, especially considering the game script that you're going with. Like if you're going with a, a Bucks heavy build, I think Justice Hill is just a, a no brainer in terms of a buyback. But uh, these wide receivers would be the other way to go out there and get different. And now for the prop side of things where I've got six props that I've already taken, you might want to consider adding yourself. So the first prop here is an over on J.K. Dobbins rushing yards. He's got a super soft matchup against the Cardinals front seven, which has been torched to start 2024. There are a bottom five defense when it comes to rushing yards allowed per game. And then on the flip side, you've got a Chargers offense that has been rushing the ball a ton under Jim Harbaugh. That was to be expected. That is his style of offense. And when you have J.K. Dobbins, who's also looked electric to start this season, this is a no-brainer over to take. So he was at 81 and a half, 82 and a half on most books when I took this over. And in fact, the line that I ended up getting was one yard lower over there for my Patreon members. So of course, that's the place to be to catch all these slips as I'm entering them for the best line available. But even up there, 81 and a half, I would still smack that over as the matchup makes a lot of sense. You also still have a little bit of line value compared to this books that had them up there, 82 and a half yards. And some of them even had some juice towards the over there too. So uh, this is much more of a traditional analysis sort of play as I really like the matchup against that Cardinals defense, but uh, also one that had slight value compared to the other books as well. Next up, we got this over on Marvin Harrison receiving yards. It is still at its original line, which is nice. And uh, it's another one that's matchup based. This Chargers defense, though, they've been relatively stout to start this year against receivers in general. I should say in particular, uh, they've been average at best. Now, I don't want to say that they've been terrible because they're still top 10 against opposing quarterbacks, top 10 against opposing running backs. But Marvin Harrison Jr. can take a one yard reception, can take a five yard slam and turn it into a 50-yard touchdown. So while I'd probably avoid him for something like a receptions line as he's much more of a home run play sort of wide receiver, uh, receiving yard line like this in a game that they're slight underdogs in against that Chargers team um, is what I think a solid over would look like. And he's at 53 and a half on a lot of sports books too. So though there's only a slight amount of line value, right? Same thing with that J.K.'s Dobbins line. It's not like it was five to 10 yards off. He is at least higher on most of those other books to compare to. So 52 and a half and over I took on the other side of that game. You could also say that there's a slight amount of correlation between these top two props as well as a positive game script for the Chargers uh, would lead to them rushing more. And on the flip side of things, if the Chargers were playing from ahead and rushing more, that would likely mean that the Cardinals are behind and hence they'd be passing more, which would help that prop out. So I like the slight little bit of little correlation you get between those two, but uh, independently really solid props as well. And then finally, it was an over on Baker Mayfield passing attempts, which was 0.5 lower when I took it over there on the Patreon page. But even at 36 and a half, it at least fits the script that I'm expecting in that Baltimore versus Bucks game, which is relatively high scoring. The total is just under a 50 point total, but you've got Baltimore as the sizable favorites. And they this year have been really good against opposing rushing attacks, not so much against opposing passing attacks, where they've actually been bottom five against opposing wide receivers, bottom 10 in the league against opposing quarterbacks quarterbacks in terms of yards allowed per game. So Baker Mayfield, the team in general struggled to go out there and rush the ball this year, but they've been extremely productive with Baker through the air. So they're already passing the ball a ton. They're going against the defense that wants you to pass it based on the stats that we've seen. And um, that's why I took the over. He was at 36 and a half on a few books. So at 35 and a half, right, it made a lot of sense to want to take that over. But even at 36, I believe he had some slight juice towards the under at 36 and a half, but uh, you would lean over with that push equity there at 36. 
And then lastly, we've got a few props over here on underdog. So the first one kind of coincides with the last one that we talked about there. So we'll start off there. It's an over on six and a half receptions for Chris Godwin. Mike Evans is a little bit banged up heading into tonight. If you guys didn't see, he had a questionable tag most of the weekend. Could even have been a game time decision out there for this evening. But what I like about Chris Godwin this evening is the great matchup as well, right? As I already mentioned, bottom five defense against passing over there in Baltimore, which kind of surprising with how stout they were last year. But uh, that's the those are the stats over six whole games at this point so far far from a fluke this far into the season and uh chris godwin is a high um, reception receiver to begin with a ppr monster would call him out there in fantasy so it's six and a half receptions he was just about minus 120 to minus 125 for his over out there in a few books so not necessarily a plus ev play that i'm going after but more one taking advantage of potentially a few extra looks with mike evans banged up and then one where the matchup checks out as well and then next up we got this over in jk dobbins touchdown so uh we had the you know rushing yard line before over there on prize picks uh, I got this at even money, so now it's 0.88x out there for the multiplier. A little bit of a tongue twister there. Um, so not as good a value as what I ended up getting myself, so I guess you could take this out of the slip if you didn't want that multiplier there. It does take it from a 6x payout down to a 5.28x, so that's not ideal, but he was minus 140 to go out there and score. So at even money, it was a no-brainer to play him, especially because he's the vulture out there for the Chargers, and if somebody else were to steal a rushing touch down from him, uh, not named Justin Herbert. The quarterbacks don't count out there for the Vulture program, but if you had one of those backup running backs go out there and steal a one, two yard touchdown, he's going to get credit out there for the Vulture program. So you won't hit the prop, but you will get it voided. You'll get a refund out there on that leg. So even with this 0.88x multiplier, like I don't think it's the worst idea because he is so, you know, juiced heavily towards that over. But um, at 1x multiplier, that's why it was an absolute no-brainer to play. And then this last one you could see, unfortunately, got bumped as well. I did have Lamar Jackson at 9.5 rushing attempts. He's at 10 now, so that got bumped up by 0.5. Um, so a good replacement for that. I don't know if it's the best prop now that that one's at a solid 10, but you could go with this rushing yards prop. I think that would make a whole lot of sense as well. Um, he was juiced heavily for the over at nine and a half. In fact, he's like minus 130 to minus 145 odds out there towards that. Um, but even this rushing yard prop, I think could make quite a bit of sense because Tampa Bay for as, you know, I, I, I'm going to put this nicely. They, they've fallen off a little bit on defense. For as mediocre as they've been on that side of the ball, at least against the pass this year, their rushing defense has been pretty damn solid. So I think if the Ravens are going to rush the ball tonight, that's why I've been avoiding some of the Derrick Henry props in particular, is I think you're going to see a lot of options and potentially Lamar Jackson doing a lot of that rushing tonight. Um, they've got some really good linebackers and their defensive line are just some absolute horses. So it's hard to run between the tackles against them because of just how large the bodies are out there in the defensive line for Tampa Bay. Um, so you might see Lamar Jackson have to do some of that towards the outside. At least that's what I think you're going to see tonight. It's why I took his over on rushing attempts on top of that sportsbook odds that we were getting before. So this over on rushing yards would fit that kind of narrative as well. Maybe not as good a line value is what you're getting with that rushing attempt prop, but uh, that ended up getting bumped. So the best way to play this, in my opinion, would be to either... Play this as a three-man, accept the 5.28x payout, or to potentially take out that J.K. Dobbins and run this as a two-man. So whatever you guys want to do, obviously, it's your own exposure. I'm not going to go out there and click it in for you, but uh, these are definitely props that I found as value. Over there on the Patreon page, you can find all the different slips that I'm taking, all posted as soon as I'm getting the action to it. So if you want to get all of that before anything bumps, that is the place to be, but uh, that's all I've got out there for tonight's two-game slate. Alrighty, guys, that is all I've got for today's video. Go ahead, smash that like button if you guys haven't already. Also, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the content to come including our Thursday night football preview, week eight main slate preview, Monday night football, all of that throughout the rest of the year. So you won't want to miss any of it. Hit that subscribe button and show some love on the video. Get this out there to even more people by hitting the like button as well. I appreciate you guys, all your support here as per usual. Go ahead, also comment down below who you've got as the top scorer out there on the two game slate for a chance to earn a free month on my Patreon page. If you can give me that top score out here for Monday night football and their raw score within two fantasy points, you will win automatically a free month of my Patreon page. So go ahead, feel free to go ahead, give me your guess down there in the comments. Best of luck with that. Best of luck with all of your exposure for this evening as well, but it's over there for DFS, any of your GPP lineups, or for your prop slips there on Underdog and Prize Picks. Hopefully, you can make it a really profitable one. Hopefully, enjoy all the action tonight. Best of luck, and let's go out there and have a good one. <laughs>